Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 136. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, Catdog Joe has dug up win games backslash unclassified backslash mine help. I think I know what this is going to be. Because there was a kind of thing that happened with, specifically with Windows Minesweeper. Um, where is it here? Mine help. So there's a particular thing that happened with Minesweeper where a lot of people didn't really get how to play it. <laughs> so you had these programs show up which actually made it possible to play the game for you. So let's see what he... So let's see what this has to say. Mine Help is a little nonsense program, <laughs> which assists you with the Minesweeper game included in Windows 3.1. It is able to solve the simple parts of the puzzle, leaving only the really challenging ones to you. And program is free, no warranties, of course. Okay. So you can start Mine Help at any time. Minesweeper is not active. Mine Help just sits and waits. As soon as Minesweeper is started, Mine Help begins to analyze the game situation. Okay. And it also looks like it has a couple settings here. You can either have basic settings, you can have expert settings, which will try to solve things a little more creatively, or random, which makes it just potentially uncover things that could totally screw you over. <laughs> so I don't know why you would use that mode. You just pick random things yourself. Anyways, let's try running this thing. So it's got automatic status. It's set the expert level. Okay, so we're just going to leave that in the corner. And let's go boot up Minesweeper. So there it is. You got a little Minesweeper game going right here. So if I say click on something, see what just happened there? I made one click and the game auto flagged all of that. Yeah, <laughs> that's not supposed to happen. Like, let me reset here. Let me just show you what normally supposed to happen when you play a Minesweeper game here. You make your moves. You set your flags down. You cord away all the spots that you know aren't going to have mines. And sooner or later, whoops, you're done. And apparently I've never actually played Minesweeper on this install of Windows before. Which makes sense. So yeah, that's how it normally goes. But now, we set that back into gear. We make a move that reveals something. And hey, look, we just beat it in four seconds. <laughs> so now if we set it to something like expert mode, we need to get a... Well, it would help if we actually found like a nice big section. Look at that. <laughs> It just cleared expert mode for us in three freaking seconds. It's faster than my beginner time. Actually, to be totally honest, I actually do have... It's not on this install, obviously. In fact, it's way back on my Pentium 120 computer, which I showed in an old filler video. But I do actually have a beginner time of three seconds, roughly. I'm pretty sure the fastest times out there are even faster than that like minesweeper is serious business for some people but yeah this little program right here just did all of that that's actually kind of fun to watch although clearly it isn't capable of doing everything yeah look at that it just cleared out all, pretty much everything except these two spots right here which are both sections where it's a 50 50 shot that's one of the problems with Minesweeper, is that you end up with these situations where, because you're at the edge of the board, it's created a situation where you don't have enough information to reliably gauge whether or not there's a mine somewhere there. Like, I mean, if I was developing, if I was developing a new Minesweeper game, because I, I made Super Minesweeper in the past, but if I was developing a new Minesweeper game, what I would do is I would actually have it so that you couldn't have mines all along the borders. 
and that after you've cleared a certain amount of the board, the border would now open up and reveal its information because that would eliminate these 50-50 possibilities which tend to happen right at the edges of the board. Ooh. This time it only revealed that little chunk there. Yeah, the, the, the system's not per, not perfect, but it th gets a lot of it. I mean, I'd have, to, I'd, I'd have to go back and look at the footage to know if I could actually do that without any extra help. Like, this little section right here, it's not... It's having trouble figuring out anything out from that. Like, you probably could if you were using some really advanced tactics, but... I think the way the expert, the expert setting here is doing it is pretty similar to how I would do it. And now, just for fun, let's see if it can handle the maximum size possible, which I forget what it is, but we can find out pretty simply. So the maximum size was 24 by 30. And if we set it to something like 100, whoops, 150 mines, look at that. <laughs> it just cleared all but 18 of them. So yeah, this is a neat little program. Although it has an animation setting here. I wonder what that does. Let's try restarting here. I'm guessing the animation setting just makes it so that it goes a little slower. Maybe. I don't know. So yeah, that's what MineHelp does. And this is just one example of these kinds of software. In fact, actually, this is the most stable example I've seen. Because I remember, I remember in the past running programs like this and causing Windows to crash horribly horribly badly so this is actually a good example given the fact that it works perfectly fine like i mean obviously um if you're trying to make like a best time like these best times are totally invalid so i might as well just reset them but yeah this is definitely one of those fun little programs to mess around with if you're having trouble with playing minesweeper but ultimately you should just learn to play minesweeper <laughs> Not that hard, really. It's just math. That's all it comes down to. It's just math. Next up, Linwaz dug up win games backslash strategy backslash foreplay. So with a name like that, I'm going to guess maybe some kind of Connect 4 type game. Um, where is it? Foreplay. Well, not that kind of foreplay. Um, file ID dot this. Foreplay two-player games similar to the old tic-tac-toe games, familiar to most everyone, but foreplay expands on the old idea with added spaces for gameplay. Hmm. Instead of playing on a 3x3 grid, you now play on a 4x4 grid that makes it more difficult to win. Or more annoying. Um, register. What? <laughs> you serious? Okay, so we've got a game that's like tic-tac-toe, but you want five dollars for it? Really? This better be like the best tic-tac-toe clone ever. Anyways, let's see what we got here. Uh, Foreplay from Short Dog Incorporated. Written by Sean Bishop, copyright 92. Program is Shareware. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's a 4 by 4 grid. And we got about, that's just the screen again, exit and res, wait, is this two players only? Hang on a second, uh, doc file, yeah, I'm not seeing anything in here that suggests that there's any AI in this program whatsoever, like, that's kind of a problem, like, I mean, you're trying to sell a program that is an extraordinarily basic game that pretty much anybody with a pen and paper can play, and yet you're trying to charge money for it without AI. Like, I mean, if this was a chess game, I could imagine that would like make sense because writing AI for chess is difficult. They, in a chess game, after the first three moves, the number of permutations possible is just astronomical. Like, I mean. Chess AI takes a lot of effort to make so that it doesn't like take forever to do its thing, but here, like a tic-tac-toe grid does not have a lot of permutations to it. You could write an AI that could literally go through all of them and pick the best move 100% of the time. And with a 4x4 grid, like I mean... Actually... 
I think there's other issues at play here, given the fact that we're dealing with a 4x4 four four grid. Because, yeah, you're just trying to make four in a row, right? Yeah. But... Yeah, the, okay, um, how do I explain this? So, I mean, in a, tic, in a normal tic-tac-toe game, you're just trying to make three in a row. Now, if you have a three-by-three three grid, which is like this, spa this space up here, like, that would be a winning move right there. But, because this is a four-by-four four grid, it has to go all the way to the edges, like, in a 3x3 three three grid, there's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 possible winning, winning combinations for each player. But if you ink, like, there's 9 spaces and 8 possible winning combinations. But here, there's 16 spaces. So 7 more spaces. It's like, um, it's, it's like not quite double, but it's close to double the spaces but only 10 winning moves. So you haven't doubled the number of winning combinations, which means you're gonna end up in, with situations where the game could be like a permanent draw state, like you wouldn't be able to win no matter what. I think this might be one, no, no, the, uh, yeah, this would be one of those states because even if, well, I guess player two just won there. Well, like, I mean, hang on, if, if, Let's say O goes there. We'll say X goes there. O there. X there. O there. X there. O there. X there. This can't be anything but a draw. But only eight moves have been made. <laughs> like. Yeah, look at that. There, there's no way for X to make a for X to make a column or a row or a diagonal, and there's no way for O to do the same. This is a draw, and yet the game's only half over. Even in tic tac toe, you still have it. By the time the game is guaranteed to be a draw, there's only a couple or three moves left. But right now, there's eight moves left, so you still have to play out half the game, knowing that nobody can win. I, yeah, this is not this is not really well thought out, is it? Like, I mean, when you have a game that tries to be like tic tac toe, but allows you, but has it so that you're making longer lines. Usually, you have a much larger grid to accommodate that. That way, the game isn't over before it begins, in a sense. Like, if you like with a four by, I think actually, I think five by five, five and a row is a more common thing to see but the grid is not five by five usually it's more like 19 by 19 or something big like that because you want to make sure that there's a lot of potentials for keeping the game going and getting that line or column or diagonal or whichever because as you can see right here with just eight moves out of 16 moves necessary to complete the board we've already reached a draw state this cannot be a win for either player so yeah, that was foreplay. It's um well first of all it's not worth five dollars, let's put it that way. But it's an interesting attempt at making like a, a variation on tic-tac-toe, but quite frankly, this is um it's not worth five dollars. If it had AI, then maybe, but yeah, it, like I mean at least it looks good, but this could have used this could have used some better design work. And finally, Matthew Belshans dug up DOS games backslash adventure backslash ADV. This could be literally anything. Um they got an ADV executable, compress.dat, and then an ADVI and ADVT files. Um let's just try running it. Welcome to the new adventure. Say news to get up to date game details. Apparently, whatever this is, is copyright 83 to 93 Michael Goetz. Um, okay, instructions, sure. Uh, game. 
Oh, so this is just a remake of Colossal Cave Adventure? Okay, um... Well, first of all, I'm dismayed by the fact that it didn't give me instructions. I'm gonna try putting Caps Lock on. Let's quit back out. Okay, so let's try this again. Unless that's the instructions right there. <laughs> Well, I guess it is kind of instructions, because it is saying, direct me with commands of one or two words to warn you that I look at only the first six letters of each word. Okie dokie. So yeah, this looks like it's just a remake of Colossal Cave Adventure. Well, let's see how it goes. You're standing at the end of a road before a small brick building. Around you is forest. A small stream flows out of the building and down in the gully. Uh, look. Building. Uh, that didn't help. <laughs> Also, I've noticed that you have to hit enter twice for some reason when you put something in. Like, if we go look stream and hit enter, it just sits there. And we have to hit enter again before it will actually do anything. And apparently it's just not telling me anything. <laughs> what about exits? Doesn't recognize exits. Okay, well, that's a problem. Like, what direction am I supposed to go? Maybe the help will tell me. Oh, well, that's, um... <laughs> what? What? Okay, this is a problem. Backspace doesn't actually clear the characters, and the delete key just puts in that mess. <laughs> oh my... How do you write a text adventure where backspace doesn't work? Come to think of it, how do you write a text adventure where you have to push the enter key twice? Okay, this looks like a little better here. So, I know of places, actions, and things. Most of my vocabulary describes places it is used to move you there. Move, try words like forest, building, downstream, enter, east, west, north, south, up, down. I know a few special objects like a black rod hidden in the cave. The object can be manipulated using some of the action words that I know. Usually you'll need to give both the object and action words in either order. But sometimes I can infer the object from the verb alone. Also note that cave passages turn a lot, and that leaving a room to the north does not guarantee entering the next room from the south. Oh boy. So... I'm going to guess that maybe the original Colossal Cave Adventure did have that kind of situation as well, but... Here's the thing. We can't backspace. Enter has to be hit twice. And if we look at the current area, it tells us places. So I'm guessing building? You just type in building? That's kind of weird. You, you type in where you want to go just by typing in the location you want to go to. Eh. Well, in any case, we found some items here. So, some keys on the ground, shiny brass lamp, food, and bottle of water. Yeah, it just occurred to me, because I've never actually played Colossal Cave Adventure, that this is the same sort of situation as in the Bajoran Mercenary Adventure we saw. So, like, how many clones of Colossal Cave Adventure exist? Like, really? <laughs> At least the Bajoran Mercenary Adventure backspace worked. Jeez. Okay, let's get all the stuff. Really? I typed in get lamp, and you won't let me get the lamp. Get brass? Doesn't know that word. Get shiny. Get lamp. Are you freaking kidding me? I typed in get lamp, and it didn't know what to do. I typed in the exact same thing again, and it's okay with that. How are you supposed to properly play a text adventure where it's not even interpreting your inputs the same, despite being the exact same text characters? Like, look, get lamp, huh? Get lamp, okay. They're identical! <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm not playing this one anymore because I don't want to get frustrated by a game that literally is broken. 
literally broken. <sighs> Maybe I just need to play the original Colossal Cave Adventure just so I have a good point of frame of reference or something. <laughs>